Poor Jappy, it was here finally I found out his Achilles heel. This little tough guy who wasn't afraid of anything and could ramble down around mountains for weeks alone and run down mountains was afraid of going into a restaurant because the people in there were too well dressed. Morley and I laughed and said, what's the difference? We'll just go in and eat. But Jaffe thought the place I chose looked too bourgeois and insisted on going to a more working man looking restaurant across the highway. I wanted to get me a full pack, complete with everything necessary to sleep. Shelter, eat, cook, in fact, a regular kitchen and bedroom right on my back and go off somewhere and find perfect solitude and look into the perfect emptiness of my mind and be completely neutral from any and all ideas. I intended to pray, too, as my only activity, pray for all living creatures. I saw it was the only decent activity left in the world, to be in some river bottom somewhere, or in a desert, or in the mountains, or in a hut in Mexico, or a shack in the Irondacks and rest and be kind and do nothing else. And I want to just dedicate my reading of this chapter um, to the memory of Oscar De Stefano, who was originally the co-owner here of Cafe Paradiso along with his sister Adriana. And um, I know that his spirit is among all the crazy poets and saints and that they are here with us today and, and uh, listening in. I put on my new flannel shirt and new socks and underwear and my jeans and packed the rucksack tight and slung it on and went to San Francisco that night just to get the feeling of walking around the city night with it on my back. I walked down Mission Street singing merrily. I went to Skid Row, 3rd Street to enjoy my favorite fresh donuts and coffee and the bums in there were all fascinated and they wanted to know if I was going uranium hunting. I didn't want to start making speeches about what I was doing or what I was going to hunt for was infinitely more valuable to mankind in the long run than ore. A big fat woman like Ma Rainey was standing there with her legs outspread, howling out a tremendous sermon in a booming voice that kept breaking from, sp from speech to blues singing music. Beautiful. And the reason why this woman, who was such a great preacher, was not preaching in a church was because every now and then she just simply had to go splish and spit as hard as she could off to the side in the grass. And I'm telling you, the Lord will take care of you and if you recognize you have a new field, yes, and splish, she turns and spits about 10 feet away, a great splish of split. Spit. See, I told Jaffe, she couldn't do that in church. That's her flaw as a preacher, as far as the churches are concerned. But boy, have you ever heard a greater preacher? Yes, yeah, Jaffe, but I don't like all that Jesus stuff she's talking about. What's wrong with Jesus? Brown puddles were everywhere in the moist, sear fields. Strong, wind, warm winds with snow-white clouds across the sun and dry air. Golden days with beauteous moon at night, warm, one emboldened frog picked up a, picking up a croak song at 11 p.m. in Buda Creek, where I had established my new straw sitting place under a twisted twin tree by a little opening in the pines, and a dry stretch of grass and a tiny brook. There one day, my nephew, Little Lou, came with me and I took an object from the ground and raised, raised it silently, sitting under the tree. And little Lou facing me asked, what's that? And I said, that. And made a leveling motion with my hand, saying, tathata, repeating, that, it's that. And only when I told him it was a pine cone did he make the imaginary judgment of the word pine cone, for indeed, as it says in the sutra, Emptiness is discrimination. Morley pointed to the silver of the moon in the beginning of the evening's blue sky. That ought to light us away. Let's go. We all got up and started back. Now when I went around that ledge that had scared me, it was just fun and a lark. I just skipped and jumped and danced along, and I had really learned that you can't fall off a mountain. 
whether you can fall off the mountain or not, I don't know, but I had learned that you can't. 